Let's talk about cancer screenings. Any of you gone through that recently? That would be a PSA test, a mammogram, a pap smear, et cetera. These are all done to assure us that we're cancer free for that period of time. You know, even Dr. Otis Brawley, and I have a, a doctor friend who knows him, he's a head of the American Cancer Society. He said a few years ago, and I use this as a slide at my cancer presentations, basically I think we've oversold cancer screenings, right? I think sometimes, and I'm saying this now, not Dr. Brawley, um, I think sometimes we overpromise that, boy, we're gonna get that cervical cancer, we're gonna get that breast cancer, we're gonna get that PSA, that prostate cancer. And so let's take a few minutes today and just kind of look through some of these uh, procedures that are being done. And are we, I'll leave you to conclude, are we overselling or is it just about right? Don't go away. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Do you know who won the Nobel Prize in Science in 1918? There's a guy named Max Planck, and get this, what did he win it for? You talk about a smart guy. German theoretical physicist who originated the quantum theory. Smart guy, right? Look what he wrote. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that was familiar with it all along. Wow. That's huge, folks. And when it comes to, to cancer screenings, I think we're overdoing it. Do you remember I talked, oh, a few months ago, right on this show, about how effective the two biggest cancer screenings we use, right? The, the mammogram and the PSA test. And I just want you to go with me. I'm not going to bleed bias. I'm going to tell you what is fact. According to a big major journal here last year, um, the mammography, if you erase the false positives and the false negatives, it comes out to, whereas 50% is a coin flip, mammography offers women about a 58% accuracy. Okay, and nobody can argue that. It's in a big medical journal. I can't decide for my wife, my sisters, my daughters, etc. They need to make the decision. You need to make it based on being a prudent consumer and having that knowledge. Now you know. The PSA test stands for prostate-specific antigen, and it is neither a cancer test, nor is it prostate-specific. Pregnant women who don't have prostates have high PSAs very often. So, you know, I think back to Dr. Brawley's statement, you know, have we oversold these cancer screenings? I think, again, if I were living a sedentary lifestyle, if I didn't get out this morning and, and really go, go, go for 25 minutes working out hard, I would probably go through the standard test. I'd get a baseline. It wouldn't be a PSA. I understand. I've heard from the wind. Uh, there's a brand new prostate uh, cancer test coming out, and I can't wait to see it and see what it is. But I might go that route. If I'm eating fast foods, if I'm living a sedentary lifestyle, and if I'm under so much stress, life seems insurmountable, I'm probably doing that. I bring all of this to your attention. <clears throat> a couple of headlines. This one actually came out in 2007. Do you remember the Women's Health Initiative called WHI? You can look online, WHI, all caps. Women's Health Initiative, where they were studying a couple of hormone replacement therapies that women were told, well, you're 50 years old now, you need hormone replacement therapies. Uh, they help prevent heart disease, help prevent cancer, and just the opposite actually came to fruition. They actually induce some of these things, so they stopped the study early and told women we may want to rethink hormone replacement therapy, or HRT. Breast cancer decline linked to HRT. Study, drop in breast cancer rates related to decline in hormone replacement therapy. We stopped doing what our doctors told us, and we had fewer heart problems and fewer cancer deaths. Now that rubs against the side of the face of conservatism, right? Conservatism, uh, conservatism says get to your doctor, listen to him or her, 
and even the doctors grew. Folks, the doctors learned at the same time. And I remember back in 2002 or 2003, whenever this was, that everybody was just going crazy. Do we stop our HRT? It's stopping my hot flashes. I don't sweat at night. It's actually making me feel okay. And some women still take them. I'm okay with that, right? But just know the facts. And it just so happens when we stop taking the medicine our doctors asked us to take, we got better. Well, this is fascinating because this just came out. Uh, where did I find this? Is on the internet, Yahoo News. Less prostate cancer and screening seen after new guidelines. Fewer, far fewer U.S. men are being diagnosed with early stage prostate cancer and getting blood tests to detect the disease since an influential government appointed panel recommended against routine screening of all men. Okay, so the National Cancer Institute has come on, on that. Men, we stopped doing what our doctors told us. Stop getting the PSA test. And far fewer of us are now being diagnosed with cancer. And this article is careful to say we may be ticking time bombs. We may have cancer growing in there, but guys, I can assure you, knock off the alcohol. I can just begin exercising on a regular basis. A lot of lycopene, which is in tomato, and it's in ketchup. It's in pizza sauce, which is amazing. Lots of good supplements, they're out there. Men and women, let lifestyle steer your decisions. Not Doug Kaufman, and sometimes not even the doctor, because sometimes this is the way they learn. Okay, don't go away, we'll be back with more. Well, now that you have my take on cancer screenings, let's go to nurse Jenny Herbacek, who does a series on Know the Cause called The Cancer Connection. And by the way, if you have cancer, listen to us, that's great, but always work with a team of doctors, okay? Here we go, Jenny, take it away. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Did you know that there is a protein that's only manufactured by cancer cells? It's called the Enox2 protein, and we can find it with a simple blood test. This test can also tell you the site of origin of the cancer. This can all happen years before you would ever find a lump or bump, in time for you to implement dietary changes, a detox program, and integrative therapies to stop the cancer in its tracks. This is true early detection. Read about it in my book, Cancer Free, Are You Sure? For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. Daniel is finally going to do an exercise an old geezer like I can do. And you know what? People tend to think, well, that isn't much ankle and foot exercises. Walk up 50 steps, and that's what it's like. Okay, watch this. They say that Moses died at 120 years old, and he actually climbed a mountain to go meet the Lord. So he was 120 years old climbing a mountain. How old are you? 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80? The point that I'm trying to make is it's never too old to get fitter, to get in shape, or to be a little bit better than you were yesterday, today. So today we're gonna to focus on our feet. It's super important. These are your tires. If your body's a car, these are your tires. Start with your right foot straight ahead. I wanna go ahead and take, almost roll my foot in just a little bit rolling my foot in like so, and now I can even leave my left toe on the ground, but I'm just gonna raise up like this. Ooh, balance is important, but what I'm doing is I'm strengthening my, my calf muscles, I'm getting blood flowing through my foot, I'm letting my, my toes engage, really letting them, making sure they're active. What I'm doing here is I'm strengthening the muscles and I'm getting blood flow through my foot. If you've ever had foot issues, and I know most people have because you don't really get out and jog or move enough, Use it or lose it is a nice concept to think about. So go ahead and stay focused with that foot straight on, okay? Now we're gonna open the toe a little bit. My belly button is gonna continue to stay straight and I'm gonna go ahead and just raise up as well. I'm gonna feel this a little bit more in the, uh, the big portion uh, right behind my uh, big toe there, just like this. You're starting to get a little burn, that's okay. I'm getting the same burn. Turn the left, the foot inside like this lift as well. So you can tell all we're doing is we're just getting some, some mobility and some different angles of the foot. Feet are so important. They're, you walk on them all the time. You need them to be strong. Do these simple exercises, maybe just while you're brushing your teeth or, or while you're you know, waiting on your car to warm up or whatever. Thank you as always for checking us out. See you again soon at Nug Cross. 
Well, it looks a little like my medicine cabinet there. Poop dock, the fiber, and then the 90 and the 180 count of your magnesium, which is amazing. And, and then your probiotic, uh, which is new to your company. Scott, welcome aboard. Scott is the president of a company called Poop Dock. For several years, we've worked together. What a blessing you have been to so many. Um, you get the same reports I get. This physician that just recently left a message on your phone, uh, that one blew me away because helping one-on-one -on -one is wonderful and brilliant, and thousands of people have been helped. We're talking about constipation or bowel problems, but helping a physician means her patients now will benefit, and they'll tell their friends, so this is the way you really grow it. Welcome back, and thank you, and thank you for the new probiotic. Thank you, Doug. It's exciting what you're doing. Well, not only mm -hmm. did we get a very powerful testimony from a medical doctor, but the last time we were together, it was from a pharmacist. Actually, she was a directory of, a director of pharmacies for an entire chain store, grocery stores. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? They're people too. Yeah. And yeah. when they're constipated and nothing works, and this happens, I hear this all the time, and something works, they're happy. Hey, Scott, you're a gut guy. Um, how many times a day? I've, I've heard various stories. Um, some doctors say, you know, the bowel should move every day once. Some say after each meal. Uh, some say once a week or twice a week is fine. We're all thumbprints. We're all different. Wh what's your take having studied all this? Well, there's a really interesting book out, The Blue Zone. They're studying people that, uh, and tribes and people all over the world and, and, and people that are in modern society sure. that live healthy at 100 years plus. Mm -hmm. What are some of the basic characteristics? And it's the ones we always talk about a really good diet, exercise, moving the bowels. Really, okay, so would you say daily is good? Absolutely. You, at least once a day, yes. right? Because some people, boy, I'm so jealous. Some of you guys tell me, look, after I eat a meal, I move my bowels again, wow. Um, I will tell you, I've never had that problem. Uh, I use your fiber because it's one of the best fibers I've ever found on the market. Mm -hmm. I, it's not just psyllium fiber, is Correct. it? Correct, no. What else do you do? What we did is, since most uh, bowel problems and, and every disease has got a common denominator of, of uh, inflammation, mm. we added natural anti-inflammatory herbs, blended mm. in with the psyllium so it calms and soothes okay. inflammation. So then we get a really good transition, uh, easy delivery in and out of the bathroom in minutes. And then, of course, we also added L-glutamine, which is the best amino acid for the gut. You take yours in the morning, you said, you and Veronica. And I, stomach, I take yeah. mine, yeah, in the evening before I go to bed. Um, and I don't think that really matters when you take it, just that you take it, folks. Here's the problem. I got some stats. Scott, one of the producers, gave me this stat. In 2010, one billion, in America, one billion, eight million plus office visits with doctors. And of those, diseases of the GI system, of the digestive system, 36 million a year. Do the math. Three million of us are going to gastroenterologists each year, in a year. And so many folks, if you only knew the power you possess to change your diet, look more at our phase one diet, and then look at detoxifying or absorbing mycotoxins out, that's what psyllium does of the gut. Now, you've taken it a step further, and that's what I want to dwell on in the final uh, minutes. And that is you've added a probiotic, uh, a new strain that you discovered a doctor had, uh, and this isn't your regular doctor, she's one of the top five in the world studying these uh, bacteria. Tell us a little about that. These uh, probiotic strains, and probiotic strains have characteristics, benefits that's going to contribute to your health. They are extremely, bro they're extremely broad. Okay. They're some of her best strains, if not the prize strains. Actually, she said, these are, the, these are my prize strains of my entire career. And she is referred to as one of the five world authorities on probiotics and gut health. And our gut is where everything happens. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and Scott, what amazes me is, I think since you and I have known each other, they've discovered a big part of our immune system is in that good bacteria. Have you swallowed a lot of antibiotics? Have you eaten a lot of meat with mycotoxins in the meat? They're called antibiotics in the meat. 
uh, you may need to correct some of that bowel problem, and that's where Poop Doc comes to play. Thank you, Scott. Great to see you. Thank you, Doug. Do you want to hear something that saddens me? More than half of our country takes at least one prescriptive medication, and they don't have to. I suppose this is great news if you're a pharmaceutical company, but what if you're just a plain, ordinary human being like you and me? Don't get me wrong, there is a place for prescription drugs, but not in 50% of our nation. Let me give you the simplest prescription if you want to come off these drugs or prevent yourself from having to go on them. Eat right, exercise more, and take your vitamins. This is exactly what the father of medicine, Hippocrates, told us, and it still holds true today. Eating right is about a permanent lifestyle change that is easy, healthy, yummy, and you'll never go hungry. No processed food, good sources of protein, lots of vegetables, nuts, some low sugar fruits, and plenty of healthy oils like macadamia nut and avocado. There is so much science that tells us a diet of this type will not only allow you to lose weight if needed, but it also helps maintain a healthy weight, supports your heart, your brain, and your overall quality of life. Who wouldn't want this? I'm Dr. Fred Pescatore for Know the Cause. You see what that just said? Know the cause? What if we knew what doctors call the etiology? What if we knew why we had these tremors? What if we knew why we had blepharospasms, eye twitches? What if we knew why you get out of the bed in the morning and you're so constipated and your joints hurt? What if you knew the answer in America is take this drug? Go to this many doctors, take these drugs, you have insurance now, it's all covered, don't worry about it. To that I say, that's an option, and it's a viable option. But if I don't have a life-threatening condition, maybe there are earlier options that I should try, right? Case in point. Here's our first question now. I was sick for the last two months of the year. I watched your shows, but forgot what you said about all the side effects of cookies, comma, there's no cookies, alcohol, but man, would that be a billion seller? Cookies, comma, alcohol, and candy. I will try to do better for the rest of the year. It's almost like the person inquiring here is, you know, putting his hand out and saying, go ahead, Doug, slap it. I've been there. I'm one of you. I'm not a doctor. I'm just like you. I'm a lay person who had to learn all of this. When I came back from Vietnam, I was really, really sick, and all the king's horses and all the king's men and all the prescriptions couldn't put me back together again. Then I applied something few of us do, and it starts with an L and it ends with a C, right? Logic. Then I started to say, what if it's something I'm eating? What if it's post-traumatic stress? What if I saw things a 20-year-old kid shouldn't have seen? And I put myself back together again. Had a horrible fungus growing on my skin. We all did in Vietnam, many of us. Could that fungus have gotten inside my body? The answer was yes. So you were sick two months of the year, the last two months of the year, it's no surprise, from Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, we eat things we shouldn't, okay? Good for you for jumping back on the bandwagon. I will try to do better for the rest of the year. Be careful with those cookies, alcohol, and candy, et cetera. But thank you for bringing that great uh, topic up. Um, here's another one. Doug, I'm over 60. Well, join the club. At this age, how would you keep your heart free from the damage mycotoxins can do, asks Dan. Mycotoxins are byproducts of fungus. And it's amazing, folks, how candida albicans, yeast, uh, it off gases a poisonous byproduct, right? A lot of these fungi do, so these are called mycotoxins. It's one thing for me to tell you, it's a whole other thing for Mike to tell you how he overcame it. Watch this. I was having a lot of irregular heartbeat. I'd been in the emergency room uh, Thanksgiving morning uh, is the last time. Through pursuing natural things, Dr. Dieterle is my physician, and he referred me to Dawn, said I should see her, and she got me started on the diet here about a month and a half ago, and uh, I was also having uh, some problems with um, ulcerative colitis, and I've been off my medication for that now for about a month. I don't think I've goofed up on the diet yet. I'm, I'm pretty strict with it. Pretty easy to try and it doesn't have the side effects of drugs. I've, I've been down some of the roads with drugs in the past and uh, it's hard to put my finger on it, but I always just figured that there was some way of fixing this without you know, drugs or surgery and uh, 
and it sure, sure, well, my blood pressure, I have to attribute that to the diet, too. Two weeks ago, it was 104 over 60, and last week, it was 110 over 70, and I've been running usually in the mid to upper 140s over 85 to 90. Yeah, thank you, Mike. That's really an amazing testimony and stomach problems, gut problems. So not only the ticker, but so many of us are what we call polysymptomatic. Well, Doug, I can't see very well and I have ringing in my ear and my back hurts and I'm constipated. So you go to a ringologist for this problem and a backologist for this problem and a constipationologist for that problem. Or you could realize you're all glued together with cells. You can take good care of those cells by starting today and starting our phase one diet, change like Mike did. You know, it's interesting, this is the year I turned 67 years old. Uh, I used to say young, 67 years old. I'm getting along in years, and yet I feel better at 66 than I did at 36 because I have changed my lifestyle to accommodate feeling good. The road forks here, guys. When you hit 60 years old, you can start visiting every doctor in America, and we've made it free for you to do that or you can become very responsible with your health. A workout program like you see Daniel, you see uh, us in the kitchen eating well, Lindsay's program and so forth. So just keep in mind, change is a good thing. And finally today, how long should I stay on the phase one diet? To wit, begs the question, how long do you want to feel good? Okay, do you wanna feel good for two months? Stay on the phase one diet for two months. I graduated people from phase one to phase two, beans, other fruits, and so forth on the phase two diet. So many people, though, maybe half of them say, I feel much better on the phase one. The question is, can I stay on the phase one diet for the rest of my life? The answer is for most of you, absolutely. Don't go away, more on Know the Cause to come. If you are working hard on eradicating mold and mycotoxins and not getting anywhere, the common causes that you should ask your healthcare professional to help you identify that may be sabotaging your efforts include intestinal parasites, low stomach acid, low thyroid function, iodine deficiency, low vitamin D, zinc copper imbalances, presence of biofilms, and methylation disruptions. Methylation is one of the ways that we detoxify mycotoxins and produce glutathione. Folate, not folic acid, the methyl or hydroxy forms of vitamin B12 and vitamin B6 can be used to improve methylation pathways. I'm Dr. Greg Emerson for Know the Cause. Still doing my Daniel exercises, up and down, foot and ankle exercise. Thanks, Daniel, for doing that. Thank you, Jenny Herbacek, for teaching us the cancer connection. Uh, my opening was about cancer today. Folks, always work with a good doctor that you trust when you have a serious disease, right? Take what we tell you and use that as part of a team uh, for wellness. Thank you, Scott. Man, the amazing story of this product. And by the way, uh, he brought this out on the set. This is one of those little, you know, you put a battery in them and they brrrr and they stir. Just put a scoop. He has a scooper in here already. Put a scoop of this in water and then brrrr. Now, I don't know if this is free or not. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it is. Or just tell him when you call Poop Doc, just say, I'll order your product, but I want you to throw in one of those. Okay, Doug asks if you could. Th Doug said to throw in one of those. Boy, will I get in trouble for that. Thank you so much all of you, each and every one of you. Mike, thank you for the great testimonial. Thank you for liking our website. Thank you for liking our Facebook. Thank you for liking our YouTube channel. Thanks for liking me. I'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.